right here. And we got you. We got you. We got you. Good morning. Sunday night and we have a Viper 6 alert day for all day Monday. The rain will continue along with some storms that could become strong to severe. I'll have all the details coming up. Right now on News Channel 6 at 11, Super Bowl 58 officially in the books. We can take a look at the top moments from tonight's game. Plus, Golden Harvest wants more volunteers to help with food and security in the CSRA. And Republican presidential candidate Nikki Haley traveling across the Palmetto State ahead of the upcoming primary. Your news at 11 starts right now. Live from Television Park, this is WJDF News Channel 6 at 11. I'm Renette Dubose. Thank you for joining us. We want to begin with a check of our forecast with meteorologist Jenna Petracci, who is tracking a Viper 6 alert day for tomorrow. Hey, Jenna. That's right, Renetta. We'll definitely see the worst of the impacts tomorrow. However, this event has started with some very heavy rain coming down across the CSRA. Just nothing too significant at this time. We don't have any flood warnings in place, no advisories, and definitely no severe storms. But there definitely is some thunder and lightning. Let's take a closer look now across some portions of the CSRA. Starting up towards the north in Lincoln and Wilkes County, some heavy rain right across town in Washington and Lincolnton. Down towards the metro, some heavy downpours as well around Bobby Jones headed up towards Martinez and Evans you're about to get some of that heavy rain but for the most of us it's just light at this time just coming down very consistently those rainfall totals are quickly climbing so some of us already at the inch mark Wrightsville over an inch of rain definitely approaching that in our western counties now and around half an inch at Augusta and Aiken there's an aerial flood watch for pretty much the entire CSRA with the exception of our southern line counties I'm expecting two to four inches of rain by the time this is said and done Monday night and isolated locations could go over four inches of rain so very damp Sunday evening. Here's a live look at our Terry Lambert Hyundai Skyview cam over in Aiken. Temperature wise, we're sitting in the 60s, so no need to bundle up tomorrow morning. You'll just want to bring the rain gear with you. 63 in Augusta, Allendale, Barnwell, Thompson, Evans, everyone pretty much at 63 degrees. 61 though in Millen, Swainsboro a little bit cooler at 59, 62 in Edgefield, and 61 in Gibson. Winds aren't too much of a problem right now. They're at 14 miles per hour in Waynesboro, a little bit gusty down there with gusts up to around 25 miles per hour but as I mentioned nothing severe for now most of the strong storm activity still to the west of us we have this warm front to our north and then a cold front will swing through tomorrow evening and that's a little of a chance of some severe storms slight risk of severe weather across the CSRA but our main concerns here are definitely the heavy rain and flooding and coming up I'll have a look at the future cast and everything you can prepare for for your Monday but back to you Thanks, Jenna. Coverage you can count on continues with a developing story out of McDuffie County where a deadly shooting investigation is underway. The GBI tells us that the shooting occurred on McCommon Street in Thompson. Two women were shot during the incident. 21-year-old Otiquiana Williams was pronounced dead at the hospital. The second victim remains in the hospital where her condition is unknown. An autopsy is scheduled on Williams, and you can stay tuned to News Channel 6 for more on this developing story. And the Waynesboro Police Department needs your help locating a truck they say hit four people. It happened around 6.30 Friday night. Investigators say the truck, there on your screen, left the scene after hitting one adult and three children crossing the street. If you recognize this vehicle, please call the numbers on your screen, and you can remain anonymous. And it was an exciting night on the football field with Super Bowl 58 taking place in Las Vegas. For only the second time in history, the game went into overtime. Kira Goldstein joins us now with the top moments from tonight's game. Kira. Yeah, Renata, Super Bowl 58 was an instant classic with the Chiefs going back to back with the overtime win over the 49ers. Now, a big turning point in the game came from our local guy with two minutes left in the third quarter. The Chiefs punted, but it was muffed. 
and it was recovered by Laney High School alum Jalen Watson. The Chiefs would go on to score shortly after, and it would then then they would retake the lead. A big moment for the Wildcat alum. And then in overtime, Georgia Bulldog alum Nicole Hardman was also able to contribute to the game. He secured the winning touchdown for the Chiefs as Kansas City got the win 25 to 22. I will have more highlights and reaction from tonight's game coming up in sports, but for now, back to you, Renetta. We'll see you soon, Kira. Thanks. Now, with the Republican presidential primary, Golden Harvest needs volunteers to help support its in-house food programs geared towards providing easily accessible meals to children and families. Bria Smith spoke to staff about what you can do. We're averaging about um, 3,200 bags a week. A Feeding America study shows 44 million Americans face food insecurity. And Golden Harvest Food Bank works throughout the CSRA to help reduce this number. But with the growing demand for food, the nonprofit's need for volunteers grows as well. But we have bought the backpack program and the senior box program in-house. And because it's in-house, we're needing at least 40 volunteers a day. Among these new programs is the backpack program that helps children and students have a meal beyond the schoolhouse. We provide um, shelf-stable food for children um, to take home for over the weekend. There's, uh, I think, one in six children in our area are experience hungry, hungriness and um so we try and provide that food for them for over the weekend. Tiffany Matthews works directly with the program and tells me the impact this initiative has on these children. Because they usually rely on lunches and breakfast from school. Um, so we just try and help them have food over the weekend. Paws says she's grateful to have the help of the volunteers and hopes that more people will register to continue supporting children and families throughout the CSRA. My heart it is overwhelmed, full of joy when I see the volunteers come in to help because we know that we are sending, they are helping us to pack food to send home with kids that may not have food for the weekend. It is being a help to our community. Um, it also helps our seniors when we're packing the senior boxes. It helps those that can't get out to be able to have food delivered to their homes. And it's just, it's a great feeling to see the volunteers in this space to help us do that. Those volunteer days and times are Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 12 and 1.30 to 4 p.m. To learn more about volunteer opportunities, visit WJBF.com. In Augusta, Bria Smith, WJBF, News Channel 6. Bria, thanks for that report. It's a big health concern in the United States that affects millions of people, depression, and more than 15% of young people between the ages of 12 to 17 have major depression. Tuesday on Jenny, an Augusta nonprofit, Channel Paths, helps kids in 19 local counties by breaking down the barriers, including accessibility and ability to pay that keep many people from getting help. Channel Paths offers free counseling with professionals who can intervene before a crisis happens. Without intervention, it can lead to further issues, to, to substance abuse down the road. Absolutely, and you're correct about that. So we want to catch this early. We want to give these kids an opportunity to talk to someone who isn't afraid to talk back to them. A lot of times parents just don't know what to say. And I, I had a situation where a parent had lost a child to suicide and so she she told me she said I didn't know what to say to him when he told me how he was feeling I just didn't know what to say so we hope that we can catch those kids yeah yeah we will also have a team member from the Augusta Mini Theater and gorgeous roses real roses that last up to three years find out about Rose Box NYC Tuesday at 1230 on Jenny <laughs> And there's a lot of rain coming down now and a lot more to come as well. It's a Viper 6 Alert Day Monday as we track the possibility of flooding along with severe weather. I'll have all the details when we return. Mobile log fencing options make it easy for you to get the service you need when you need it. Schedule online at MetsPlumbing.com and welcome us to Augusta as we continue delivering top-notch solutions with exceptional customer service.
The Live 5 for 6 Skyview Network, sponsored by Terry Lambert Hyundai. Now, your most accurate forecast with WJDF Live 5 for 6. A lot of rain happening now across the CSRA and a lot more to come. Check this out on Live Viper 6. We have some heavy downpours at times, but for the most part, just this widespread rain. And across the CSRA at the moment, a lot of this activity is light, but we are seeing some heavy downpours here and there. Starting out up in Wilkes County and Lincoln County, right around the lake. That's where we have some heavy rain. Further down towards the south, just heard a heavy downpour here at the station. That now moved across the river, now into North Augusta. And then further down towards the south, east we're also seeing a lot of that widespread heavy rain in johnson county and emmanuel right outside of wrightsville and over swainsboro very widespread heavy activity rainfall totals certainly starting to climb earlier today just a few hours ago during the six o'clock show we were under a quarter of an inch and just like that already seeing some of us reach the one inch mark such as down in wrightsville and half an inch in augusta and aiken and we'll certainly be at an inch by the time you're headed out the door tomorrow morning notice how wet it is outside already here's live look at our Terry Lambert Hyundai Skyview cam at Washington Road. Be very careful when headed out the door tomorrow morning. 63 degrees as our temperature, so definitely a mild night. We'll only get down to around 60. That's our low. South wind of 8 miles per hour bringing in all that moisture, and temperatures are very consistent anywhere. Everyone from around 59 degrees to 63. So you can see here we do have a warm front. That's the reason for the warmer temperatures. That's just to the north of us, and that puts us in the warm sector here. And every time that happens, we have the fuel for some severe thunderstorm development. So we have the surge of moisture coming in ahead of the cold front. This front comes through tomorrow evening, and that's when we'll have to watch for the storm potential. So we are under a slight risk of severe weather for all of our counties. Though I do want to emphasize that our main threat here is not the severe weather, it's the flooding. Because as you can see, with us already being at up to around an inch of rain, we have a lot more to come. So could, that could definitely lead to some isolated flooding concerns. So nothing widespread, but isolated locations could reach over four inches of rain, and for everyone, at least two inches. So let's go right into futurecast tonight at midnight. We'll see some breaks here and there, but for the most part, it's just like a hose coming in of just rain nonstop from the west. This continues all morning long, especially by around 8 a.m. to lunchtime. This is completely covered across the CSRA. It gets a little bit lighter later on in the afternoon and starts to break up, and that's when we'll have the best chance of some severe storms. But as you can see here, really doesn't look like we have those strong isolated cells. For the most part, it's just a messy rain. So definitely want to emphasize that our main concern is the rain. You can see those rainfall totals the highest anywhere from I-20 down towards the south, say towards Burke County, then our far southern line counties, not as much of a threat, but easily a lot of us will reach four inches along with the gusty winds. 40 miles per hour definitely possible tomorrow. And of course, if we do have severe storms, those gusts will be even higher. And then also on Tuesday, once we dry out and the front moves through, it'll still be very windy. So we'll be back to sunshine on Tuesday, though it's very likely we'll have a wind advisory. So our main threats here, definitely the heavy rain and the gusty winds, low chance of hail and tornadoes. Here's your day planner tomorrow, starting out around 60 degrees, making it towards the 70 degree mark in the afternoon. Clouds, rain, and thunderstorms all day long. So Viper 6 alert day tomorrow, then back to sunshine Tuesday and Wednesday. It's going to be a beautiful Valentine's Day, back to some cooler temperatures. Then by the end of the week, we'll be cloudy again, and then rain on Saturday. So. Seems like we get a lot of rain over the weekends lately, but it's always just one day out of the weekend like it was today. And we can take that. Yep, not bad. All right, thanks so much, Jenna. Coming up, a child and a man shot at a Houston mega church after a woman opened fire inside. How often the officers step in to stop the suspect next? It's not extra. WJBF Live Viper 6 Skyview Network is sponsored by Terry Lambert Hyundai. Low prices, big selection, and committed to quality customer service. Terrifying moments as a shooter opened fire at a mega church in Houston, Texas. Off duty officers who were working at the church immediately jumping into action. Here's Allison Klosek with those details. Gunfire erupting Sunday afternoon at Joel Osteen's Houston Mega Church, Lakewood. They're shooting at Lakewood. Two people down. We need an ambulance. 
the terrifying moments unfolding just as an afternoon Spanish service was about to begin. Hundreds of parishioners inside when shots rang out. We were sitting there with my mom and they started shooting and we, 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 we went scared and then we went to the, to the chairs to try to protect us and then everybody was crazy running and walking all the way. Authorities say the suspected shooter, a woman, walked into the church accompanied by a small child. She was armed with a long rifle and a trench coat with a backpack. Once she entered, uh, at some point she began to fire. Off-duty officers on the scene immediately engaged the suspect, striking her. She's deceased here on the scene. Unfortunately, a five-year-old kid was hit and is in critical condition at our local hospital. Another person, a 57-year-old man, was shot in the leg and is recovering from his injuries. Lakewood Pastor Joel Osteen thanked the officers and is grateful the situation wasn't worse. We don't understand why these things happen, but we know God's in control. And we're going to pray for that little five-year-old boy and pray for the lady that was deceased. Police said before she died, the suspect claimed to have explosives in her possession. Hazmat teams called to the scene to ensure the public safety. I can uh, safely say that we have not found anything that is of concern to our community or to this location. The police chief commending the officers who reacted so quickly. She had a long gun and it could have been a lot worse. But they stepped up and they did their job. And I want to thank them for that. Allison Kosick, ABC News, New York. Coming up, Super Bowl 58 was another instant classic. Here those seeing us up next with a look at the Kansas City Chiefs overtime win. This is a hammer. Meteorologist John Lake. Weather coverage you can count on. Headlines on News Channel 6, brought to you by Jamie Casino Injury Attorneys. The News Channel 6 mobile app is now even better. Download it today. Now, WJBF sports coverage you can count on. Well, folks, Super Bowl 58 in Las Vegas was an instant classic with KC winning in overtime. So let's take a look at exactly what happened. It was a very slow start for both teams, but in the second quarter, the 49ers got on the board first thanks to a 55-yard field goal from Jake Moody, the longest field goal in Super Bowl history. 49ers up 3 to nothing. Then with under five minutes left in the half, second and 10 for the 49ers, right outside the red zone, Purdy throws a screen pass to Juwan Jennings, who throws it to McCaffrey for the touchdown. Some great trickery by the 49ers, and they lead 10 to nothing. The Chiefs would tack on a field goal before the half, but SF holds the lead. 10 to 3 at the break. Then in the third quarter, Harrison Butker breaks a record that's only about an hour old when he kicks the longest field goal in Super Bowl history with a 57 yarder. Chiefs make it a 10 to 6 game. Two and a half minutes on the clock, Mahomes finds Marquez Valdez scantling wide open in the end zone for a touchdown. Butker knocks through the extra point, and the Chiefs take a 13-10 lead into the fourth. 11-27 to go. San Fran down by three. Purdy finds Jennings, who fights his way into the end zone for six. And the extra point would be blocked by the Chiefs, so San Fran stays in the lead by only three. That is until Harrison Butker ties it up at 16. Each team would then tack on three more, and we head into overtime tied at 19. Only the second Super Bowl overtime in history. The 49ers would get first possession in overtime and score a field goal, but with 11 seconds on the clock, first and 10 for KC, Mahomes finds Georgia Bulldog alum McCole Hardman in the end zone, and that does it. Kansas City wins back-to-back -back Super Bowls, 25-22. to And in case you were wondering what the Kansas City fans looked like at this time, there they are reacting to the overtime win at the team's watch party in the Power and Light District. Very cool. Congrats to those fans. In the meantime, there was plenty of excitement on the hardwood happening as well as number one South Carolina hosted number 11 UConn. First quarter, game tied at two. Tahina Pow Pow drills the three. Gamecocks up by three. Under two minutes to play in the first quarter. Pow Pow again from beyond the arc. She nails the three and South Carolina extends their lead to six. 
Second quarter, Gamecocks up 19 to 11. Pow Pow drains yet another one from deep. South Carolina leads by 11. And then a couple minutes later, guess who? Yep, Pow Pow. The on ball screen sinks the contested three. It was really her show. She had a season high 16 first half points, and SC takes a 14 point lead into the break. Early third quarter, Ashlyn Watkins gets the ball in the paint, makes the floater, and that does it. South Carolina gets their 23rd win as they beat UConn 83 to 65. They were not the only team in action. Georgia hosted Vanderbilt. And in the third quarter, Vandy up by five. Demore Flournoy drains it from deep. The Bulldogs cut the deficit to two. 7.22 to play in the third. Georgia down by four. Asia Avenger lets it fly from way up top. And Georgia down by just one. But Vanderbilt's specialty is aggressiveness in the paint. Here's Camille Pierre with the and one. The Commodores extend the lead to six. And then in the fourth quarter, 2.47 to go. Georgia looking to respond, but there's Pierre again with the steal. She'll take it down for the lay-in, and that'll do it. Georgia falls to Vandy 61-55, to earning their ninth loss in conference play. And finally, it was the final day of the WM Phoenix Open, and here are the final standings. Atop the leaderboard, we have Nick Taylor at 21 under. He beat Charlie Hoffman in a really fun playoff round. And then tied for third, we have Sam Burns and Scotty Scheffler at 18 under. Sahid Sagala finished there in solo fifth at 17 under. And then a little bit further down, we have former Georgia Bulldog Keith Mitchell tied for 17th at 10 under. A huge congratulations to Nick Taylor, the winner of the 2024 WM Phoenix Open. That does for sports. Renata will send it to you. Coming up, ball may be over, but some might be calling out sick tomorrow. We'll tell you why. It is important to have members. Register at AugustaMetroChamber.com Now today may be Super Bowl Sunday, but mm -hmm. tomorrow is Super Sick Monday. That's the term used for one of the biggest days for employees to call in sick. The Monday after the big game, the UKG Workforce Institute says 16.1 million employees are expected to call out of their jobs. It's gotten so bad, some lawmakers have proposed making the Monday after the Super Bowl an official holiday. I personally could get behind that, but... Yeah, I mean, I wish we had off today, though. That's always, <laughs> yeah. like, call out sick yeah. day. I was happy to be here covering the game with <laughs> Of you course. And then uh, we do have a right for a six alert day tomorrow. More rain and storms. All right. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.